welcome to another episode of Software Design from the Beginning. My name is Jonathan and I'm taking you through a progression um, from the very beginning of design to kind of more complicated topics in the future. Um, right now we're going to talk about Immerse. Now Immerse is part of the checklist. In the previous episode I looked at checklists and looked at core primary structure, gathering uh, requirements and architecture, and now I'm going to look at something called Immerse. Immerse is a, an acronym I've come up with to help you understand the, the weights involved, the influences, the forces involved. So while you're designing something and drawing those boxes and those lines, you you can always have these thoughts while you're doing that to guide you towards suitable answers. There's actually three acronyms that I'd like to introduce you to. This is the first. The, the others are actually brace and surface. And brace and surface will come up in the next videos. What we're going to concentrate on now is immerse. Immerse is an acronym that I thought about about maybe 14, 15 years back. And I've kind of taught it to interns and, and people that have worked for me in my software business um, throughout the years. And I've sort of guided them to un this understanding, like while you're designing, what could I be thinking about? Um, it's very easy to get locked into a sort of a way of thinking yourself uh, about boxes and the technical things um, and then start forgetting about the other side, uh, business side or, or perhaps some kind of technical uh, constraint that should be there but you've forgotten about. So Immerse is part of the, the heuristic, the mnemonic for understanding if your design is going through correctly. So the first law of software design is the box, the second law is the line, and the third law is the checklist, and Immerse is part of that checklist. I want to present this to you now and give you an understanding, a uh, basic understanding of what it means. Immerse is a very complicated topic. Um, it even maps to design patterns and types of architectures, ways of thinking about and reasoning about the system. Uh, this episode will just take an overview approach. So Immerse is a mnemonic, uh, agile, minimal, maintainable, environmental, reachable, solving and extensible. I sometimes say solvable instead of solving. Perhaps I should commit to one of those. Agile, let's start there. Code that is easily changed, white box. So what this means is that as a programmer you can go in, it's your code, you can add a class there is a generalization. You can add a class, you can snap it in, uh, perhaps you've got dependency injection, you can change or modify, configure something there in design time, add something, add some code, compile it and ship it. So Agile code is code that is designed so that you can make a change in the right places because you've expected it to change or you've expected it you have some kind of changeability or modifiability at that point. So agile design is very, very important um, to not place everywhere, right? So there's a trend at the moment to put dependency injection absolutely everywhere. There is a cost to doing so. But agile code, code which you want uh, to place in the right areas so that it is changeable, is a good thing. Doing too much of something can be a bad thing. Minimal code is so that we can always think about creating only necessary complexity and necessary abstractions. Um, El Shalloway says fit for purpose. Absolutely. I call it the minimal part of the immerse design principles. Minimal code is all about deleting. In the first episode, when we looked at the, the box, the first law of software design, uh, we looked at drawing out all the boxes. And the second episode, we talked about subtracting those boxes. And that is an iterative thing. You draw all the things out. You then say, well, that's, too, that's a step too far. Take it away. That's a very, very important thing. Um, minimal is part of that checklist to ensure that you are taking away Way and only keeping what is absolutely necessary, creating abstractions and generalizations that are absolutely necessary. 
maintainable is easy to understand and read, right? The code should be easy. You should follow guidelines and conventions. Um, if somebody else, another developer comes into the team, you might have found this out. They might have been, I don't know, slightly um, in love with regular expressions. Uh, maybe they code in a certain way that's slightly at odds with the rest of the team. They have some prefixes that they use all the time, and it just looks odd. Uh, perhaps, um, you know, the maintainable code um, is not that maintainable for you. Maybe, maybe you need to think about others and make a more team-oriented maintainable code. Environmental is similar to maintainable and minimal and all those things. They're very similar, but it's focused on the code must sit and be functional within the environment that it sits within. So if I'm in a web world, web design, if I'm in a pipeline world, if I'm in an MBC architecture, if I'm in a DCI architecture, what I design and how I do it should fit within that environment. It's no good designing things that are at odds with the environment. You can, but you will fight and struggle to you know, get your sorts of designs in that architecture. Could you imagine a stateless architecture and you're trying to build a stateful architecture within that? Environmental is very important. Reachable. So there are always constraints. All of these are constraints. Reachable is more specifically a project management type thought. It is budget and time. There are other types of reachable constraints in terms of team, team size, capability, and so on. But really, ultimately, you should be asking yourself when you design, can I reach this within the time frame, and can I therefore do it within the budget that's been set aside? Solving. So I sometimes say solvable because, right, we, we have solutions, we build solutions, we solve problems, that's the idea. Uh, we build software solutions. If I, if I did one line of code and it solved that immediate problem, we had a bug, I, I fixed it, um, that's a solve, that's a solution. But what about the other kind of solution? You know, the solution which is so, you know, long, it's so future-based. So I can solve a problem now, but some other problem comes along next year and, and I go, oh, it's already solved. Well, how did you do that? Well, I wrote my code so it can solve future problems. Well, how did you do that? Well, I have an agile design methodology, right? I've got some kind of decoupling. I've, I've got some kind of white box scenario and I've snapped in a class. There it is. So solving is not just solving for now. We've got to think about solving future problems. And that leads us to how we do a design. Extensible is similar to agile, except that it is a, a runtime scenario. What we want to do is give our internal developers the capability of building a plugin and shipping the plugin and solving a future problem or solving a problem that we've now encountered. We also want to be able to provide that to external developers, right? That could be part of our business capability or it could just be part of our, our kind of way of approaching code. We could say we have a core system and that that you want is part of a plugin. We're going to build a plugin. We've got a different code base. We can even hire somebody else to build that plugin. Um, it could even be part of your business capability that your software evolves from a simple application into an ecosystem and has um, an extensible plugin mechanism. In the next part, we're going to talk about Immerse Design Maturity Index. And this is how you utilize these seven weights in which order that represents a level of maturity. And we'll discuss that in the next part. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and recommend this with anyone you feel might benefit from understanding the better, fuller picture of software design. I'm Jonathan. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.